Good morning and welcome to the shop walk around video for the Hi-Fi Hangar, uh, 7th of July 2015. Um, here we have a Philips 877, one of the rarest Philips, probably the most high-end one they ever did. Um, it's all got sort of um, silence gauges and stuff on it and it's really cool. Um, Dual 506, um, this is the Roxanne Xerxes in Rosewood with the uh, power supply. Uh, this is a sort of basic uh, JVC, good for if you're starting off in vinyl, it's very good because it's, um, it's, it's cheap and it's, it's cheerful. Um, Sansui, this is the uh, the 3060. This one's lovely. It's got um, it's even got the original little protector on the arm, so it's uh, been very well looked after. It's a nice bit of kit that. Um, if you go back to the speakers underneath here, these are the IMF um, split baffle monitors that we restored. They came into us really beaten up, and um, as you can see, they're very nice now. So we've got, we've refoamed them. Um, we've kept the original stuff inside, so we haven't touched the crossovers at all. Uh, we've left them because they're actually working quite well. Um, they've got the horsehair um, material inside the line. Uh, we've done new grills with um, grey sort of charcoal grill, uh, cloth, which looks quite nice. The whole things are set with filled and sanded uh, and painted satin black, so they're quite nice. Um, DCM time windows. There's a pair of those there, American speakers. Little pair of 110s, a uh, little pair of Kef C series. Um, we've got a little kit amplifier that we sell. There's a you her report up there, which is a little, little reporter's um, cassette recorder um, before the ages of uh, iPhones and things like that. Um, then we've got the, the Erlen Technology LF6, LFT 16s, the small versions of the big ones we'll see later. Uh, in the cabinet, we've got some Revox nabs at the back with the rare um, large blue metal ones, and then we've got a John Warden tone, a James Warden tone arm, which is very hard to find. Uh, a Lin um, ITOC LB2, various cartridges in there, V15 and um, a Lin ASAC. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, over, over here, got a few microphones that came in. So we've got um, two AKG D1s, uh, D190s, which are very nice. And then there's we have a, a Garage 401, uh, a Martin Bastin service one with the, the Martin Bastin plinth, which is sort of quite nice. It all runs lovely and free. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice example actually. It's the early flush strobe one, so it's more desirable. Um, over here we have something really quite special. This is a Technics 110. Now until I clean the lid, this um, put off the plastic protection cover thing was never removed. So um, under there it's absolutely pristine. Um, so you see the condition of this is amazing. So we'll lift the lid off. And it's complete with a 3009 S2. A lot of these, when you pick them up, they tend to have S3s on, but this one's got a nice 2, a late S2, um, with, a, with a short V15 in there, Mark III. Again, the most desirable one. It's it's mint. I mean, it is absolutely pristine. It's um, the best example we've ever seen of that turntable. It's um, it's a treat to get something like that in. Um, we've got a Croft Valve Pre there. Um, we've got a couple of Cambridge Audio players, sort of interesting ones, sort of Stan Curtis era ones. This one's the CD2, um, it's a lovely player. And there's a CD6 here which um, features twin power supplies as well. It's one of those forgotten players that are very, very good. Lovely sounding players, but um, don't you know fetch much money on eBay. Um, down here we've got an AR. This is there, the nice slanty, slanty stuff, the CD06. We've actually got the whole range of this. I've got the amplifier and the CD player. Um, I believe the tape deck and the tuner as well. Uh, we're just sorting these out, they're very nice. Um, right, along here, Kef Q900s. These extremely cool Cyberman looking BBC monitors called the LS31. Um, these were genuine BBC outside broadcast speakers. Um, needless to say, very, very rare. Uh, not many pairs of these around. They sound amazing. They've got a 15 inch um, Alnico bass driver in them, and inside there, there's two GEC metal tweeters, the ones that um, look exactly like the, the HF 1300 of a Celestian driver because Celestian copied it. So it's, it's a metal gold coloured Celestian FT, uh, uh, HF 13 looking drive unit. There's two of them in there, and a big um, 15 inch Alnico bass driver. Here we have a pair of um, Gale 401s, the Chromies. And then around here we've got um, a pair of leak sandwiches, we've got two pairs of leak, these ones are four mica, which are quite um, hard to find. The first pair of four mica covered ones I've ever seen, they tend to all be teak veneer. Uh, around here we've got um, Talon bookshelves, 
uh, both 901s, uh, Mark IIs, there's four of those uh, with, the, with the EQs. Here we have a pair of DCM time frame speakers. Um, they came in with the tight windows we mentioned earlier. Uh, they're lovely, they're lovely things actually, they're American, they're sort of quite an interesting design. Um, they use convent, they're a flat, almost a flat panel speaker, but they, uh, they do use conventional drive units. Here we have a pair of Lentec um, studio monitors. They're, ba they're basically um, they're a transmission line design. Um, if I can get the, the fronts off, which I should be able to. There we go. They're quite IMF like. Uh, these are the KF B139, the B110, the T27, and the Celestian HF2000. Um, this pair were originally painted in grey, but we stripped them down and we French polished them up. Just took one layer of French polish just to sort of, you know, bring, um, bring the wood out. They're, they're, they're lovely. They're very rare speakers. Uh, and they come with the original manual as well and the original bananas. Uh, Here we have um, a pair of old RAM speakers. Um, not quite sure what model they are actually because I can't find a. a, a uh, I've got to look them up. They only came in on, on Saturday. Um, so these these are nice. One of them is damaged, but we'll we'll see what we can do with them. If not, we'll split them for drive units. Um, here we have a TIAC um, 3340 four track. That's mint and boxed with the original um, TIAC reel and a couple of accessories as well. Uh, Golden Tube Audio SE40, amazing sounding American out the close. It's had all the upgrade kits done to it and a few other tweaks suggested by the companies involved in it. So that's probably the the highest spec SE40 in the in the world. Here we have a Pure Sound A30. One of our main stay outs. We're always using one of these, we really like them. Um, and then down here, we've got a Sony um, ES player, the 55, which is a sort of proper battleship built CD player from the sort of, I think it's turn of the 90s, that one. Down here, we've got a, a Bose 1801, which is a massive power amplifier that Bose did in 1973. Um, it has various types of display, it's got a big VU, you can turn um, that off, and you can have a, a digital one there, and you can, yeah, it's, it's just. It's a good looking amp. Uh, it's 250 watts RMS and weighs around 30 to 35 kilos, so it's a big, big beast. We've got um, the original box for this unit, and they're very, very sought after. Basically made for the American market. Anyone who's familiar with um, our videos or has been to the shop will know these speakers. These are the em Eminent Technology LFT 8Bs. Um, amazing things, made, made in America for us. We're the only UK importers of these things, but I won't go any more because I'm sure you would have seen these before. Here we've got the little Pure Sound A10, nice little 15 watt sort of starter amp, that's very nice. Uh, we've got um, a name audio Snaxo, um, we've got a little bit of quad underneath there, Pure Sound Step Up Transformer. We've got a really nice um, Technics SLQ1 uh, direct drive linear tracking turntable, it's in lovely condition, it's uh, barely a mark on it. Uh, a pair of Audio Innovations 1000 series monoblocks, and down here we've got one of the big Pioneer CT850 tape decks. Uh, with the blue fluoro display, really sought after stuff, becoming very collectible. Um, this is nice, this is an SL150 Technics with the SME3009. Um, again, it's in fantastic condition, with, complete with manual. Um, what else have we got on the rack? We've got this, is interesting. This is a, a Sony TC177SD, one of the first three head tape decks, certainly the first three head tape deck from Sony. I think Nakamichi released one at the same time. But it's it's hugely built. It's basically a reel-to-reel -reel under there with a with a tape mechanism. It's a proper proper build quality on that one. Um, little basic trio K, KD uh, one hundred three three, which is a classic. PL twelve D the part the Pioneer PL twelve D rival really. They were put out at the same time. Great little deck if you're getting into into vinyl. Um, there's a Magnum Dynalab um, FT eleven tuner, which is a seminal tuner, very 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 collectible, sought after. Uh, on the speakers we've got. Um, a pair of Arcan bookshelves. I believe these are Robin Marshall design. Uh, they're very good sound and a surprising amount of bass response for those little speakers. Some realistic um, minimus sevens, the little tiny metal ones that they used to make. Um, very collectible, very nice, and, and good in white as well. Um, a few normal speakers will get you started. And over here we've got some Celestian ones that are nice mint condition and a pair of LS358 50 ohm. Rogers speakers, everyone knows about these, I'm not going to bang on about these, but these are quite late serial numbers, 30,000 I believe. Um, Jeff Coders, some Lin, uh, sorry, some uh, Rega Kites, some Roids up in the corner. So uh, yeah, that, that basically concludes it. Um, thanks for watching the video and um, check our website out, hyperhanger.co.uk um, and check our Facebook and Twitter pages. Thank you.